This is what a typical American computer keyboard looks like. This is familiar to everyone who uses a computer for anything, right? It's the standard key layout with the Q, W, E, R, T, Y in the top row of letters where your left hand is. And because of that letter pattern, we sometimes call this type of standard keyboard a QWERTY keyboard. Um, in Switzerland, the German language keyboard there starts off like ours, but theirs doesn't spell QWERTY, it spells QWERTS. Uh, the French keyboard, upper left corner, spells out AZERTY confounding Frenchies. Uh, check out one of the t keyboards that's used in Turkey. There starts with an F, and then there's a G, and then there's a letter that sort of looks like a G, but totally isn't. It's a whole different ball of Turkish wax. Uh, and, 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 and all that is, is while you're still dealing with mostly Latin script letters like we use. Uh, when you get into languages that don't use anything like our alphabet, then it gets really interesting. But you'll notice in a lot of cases, even while there, there are characters on keys that look way different than the letters English speakers are used to, like on this typical Chinese keyboard, uh, you'll notice that there's the character on a key, in this case in Chinese, but there's also a Latin script letter on there alongside the character. Now, that's not necessarily just because English is still the international language of commerce, which it still sort of is. The reason you have familiar to us English alphabet style Roman letters on keyboards all over the world is because if you want to get online, you pretty much got to use our alphabet. Even if you're in Japan or Iraq or anywhere in the majority of the internet using world right now where the native language doesn't use the type of letters we're used to. Right now, all over the world, when you're online, you're typing in web addresses that at least in part use Latin script letters. And as of today, that is all about to change. The people in charge of this stuff, uh, ICANN, the International Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, today voted to unlatinize the internet. They have internationalized the domain names of the world, which means that the web now will look a lot less like it was invented in America, which means that keyboards will get way more interesting, which means that there's gonna be about a kajillion new ways to misspell web addresses. Here to help us grasp what I'm sure is the magnificent international impact of this change that I can't quite grasp is our official guest slash non-resident expert on systems of tubes, Jenny Jardin, editor and partner of the blog boingboing.net. Jenny, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure, Rachel. How do you think this is going to affect the average American internet user, the average, Amer the average user overseas? Well, you know, some journalists were calling this a bad day for the English language. Well, it's a great day if your native language is Chinese or Greek, or if you read most of the things that you read in Hebrew or even Cyrillic. Uh, for many populations around the world, until now, they've had to sort of take this extra leap to our native language when they want to type in a domain name. And now that's going to change. It's going to start actually just with the domain extensions. So, uh, for instance, msnbc.com, that .com, part is the extension. It's going to start in the middle of November with extensions that are country specific. So for instance, .cn for China, uh, soon you'll be able to type in the Chinese language characters that mean China. And eventually that will also uh, extend to, to commercial and educational and nonprofit domains. Okay, I don't know how to type the characters that mean China <laughs> in Chinese on my normal keyboard though. How will that work? Well, you know, I imagine that there will be many different ways that uh, still make it very easy for you, uh, an English speaker, to find those domains. This is really not going to heavily impact uh, English language speakers or, or anyone around the world who's using a Latin alphabet uh, to access the Internet. This is about the next billion users on the net. And you know what? They're not going to be using the, the, the Latin alphabet. They're not going to be coming from America. They're going to be coming from other countries, China, India. Right now, now, in China, 20 to 25 percent of that population is online, and that's already 300 million users. That's about the size of the total population of the United States, and that's only 20 percent. So think about, like, the guy who's a farmer in southern China, you know, tooling around his rice farm with a little mobile phone that he wants to use to check, uh, a, you know, popular Chinese language news site. Why should he have to learn English? Many of these people, the next generation of Internet access, these are maybe people who are poor. Uh, they may be people who only have, like, a primary school education. They're not going to be learning English anyway. They should have the right to access information as easily as you and I do. 
Jenny Jardin, editor and partner at boingboing.net. Thank you for joining us tonight and helping me to understand something that I know is a really big deal but makes me feel like my brain is sprained. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.